cool. Um, I guess you can see this thing, right? Um, cool. So as said, um, the topic around the webinar we will discuss today is um, how to automate your e-commerce business. Um, Which is a really broad topic. So um, bear with us, we're going to start a few examples today, but this is the kickoff for a webinar series. So what you can expect in the future is a lot of more to come on specific use cases. So whenever you have a question, either we're going to answer it today, or if it's a little bit more in detail, we would gladly answer it in the upcoming weeks with another topic um, in the webinar. Yeah, that's a great point, actually, because the, uh, we have a lot of topics to cover in this webinar. Um, we also want to showcase you something live later on, um, how to automate some stuff in e-commerce. And yeah, to not lose any uh, more time, let's just kick things off then. So, um, Short, short intro about us. Um, who's talking to you? Um, maybe you want to introduce yourself first. Uh, I can introduce myself. So I'm one of the co-founders of Shop Story, and right now I'm the managing director of the company. And yeah, my background is kind of diverse. I studied um, informatics. I also studied business um, in Austria, but also abroad in the US and in Japan. Um, this is not the first um, venture I actually co-founded. It's the fourth one. And um, two of those were successful one was um, a good learning session, let's say it like that. And this is not a thought venture. And um, this is going to be the coolest project I've ever built on because um, what you can expect is um, a lot of automation, a lot of efficiency, but a lot of cool things um, that you can do. And this is what I basically love doing. Yeah. And innovation, right? I mean, we are um, we're in the middle of um, our not in the middle of, but we launched our no-code automation platform. We'll also show you a bit later about an um, amazing project to work on. Really proud to be part of this journey, um, along with Sebastian. Um, a little bit of, uh, so a little bit about me. My name is Christian. Um, I'm responsible for marketing at Shopstory. Um, I joined the company when it was still named Boomerang. We then um, rebranded the last year, or no, one and a half year, years ago, basically. Um, part of the company for now one year and seven months, which is for startups, um, it's quite long, I would say. So I consider myself a veteran here. Um, I, I I came joining Shop Story with a lot of um, experience in, in the B2B, but also B2C sector. I worked at Microsoft um, to be to be more clear for Xbox there. So kind of consumer business, um, gaming. Um, but also A1 Digital, working on digitalization, did a lot of B2B marketing there. And yeah, as I said, now in charge for marketing and shop story. And yeah, as I said, let's not waste any more time. Um, got a lot of stuff to show. So um, our agenda for today's webinar um, and the goals that we are setting for this webinar for ourselves are that first of all, um, we explain to you a little bit what marketing automation is to give you a basic understanding what it is, um, the areas, tackles, and whatnot. We also want to go over some typical challenges in e-commerce um, that that people usually run into together, but but to also get a feel for some of the most repetitive tasks that um, exist in e-commerce, because there are a lot, to be honest. Um, and then we're also going to show you some existing automation tools and um, talk a little bit about the differentiators there. Um, um, and yeah, and we'll show you which boxes you should take before picking it tool. Um, at the very end, we then will hop into, into our software because um, we're also working on a local automation platform as teased earlier. And we will show you how to automate some of the tasks in e-commerce in the world um, with our very own software. And yeah. Very excited about this, and let's let's get started. So, first topic: what is marketing automation? Right? Um, by 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 definition, basically, you would say that um, e-commerce automation or marketing automation is like um, in e-commerce workflow automation, where you look at your processes that you have, and those processes and workflows that you have, um, where you basically use software or technology. Um, to streamline, automate, or manage routines or complex tasks that you have, and then automate them, right? Um, there are many relevant key areas in the e-commerce sector. Um, just to name a few, um, uh, 
just to name a few, a couple of those would be like customer service, whether people are in contact with the customers or not, but also your marketing as an e-commerce business, um, your email campaigns, but also um, basically your operations in e-commerce, right, where, you, where you're doing your order fulfillment, restocking, whatnot, so the stock management is also a huge topic. Um, exactly. So automating some of those tasks or areas that I just named um, comes with some benefits, um, just to name a few. So for example, like um, optimizing your campaigns could be a good thing, right? Um, fully automated, it could be great if, if through automation you could also increase your conversion rates or ROAS because you constantly adapt and auto uh, and optimize those campaigns. But you could also save costs, save times, um, and that basically also means that you would then in return use your workforce or your resources more efficiently, right? Um, automation also enables you to make data-driven decisions because you can you can handle the mass of data that is generated through e-commerce um, way better. And then for that, you can also improve your operational, uh, your operational efficiency. You can, you can work on customer loyalty, satisfaction programs, but also accelerate or scale your growth as a business. Because scaling for some businesses, some businesses are very, um, very successful, but they sometimes struggle at the point where they start to scale the whole thing to even bigger dimensions. Um, research also underlines uh, what I just said, because you can actually see there are dozens of studies. We uh, we actually can also uh, throw you other other studies after after the webinar. But just to give you a few takeaways, where you can really just see that most of the successful businesses nowadays, or the biggest e-commerce businesses out there, already use automation. Right? Um, I'm not going to read all the quotes now. You can you can also read it yourself. But um, the basic story here is that automation um, really makes those big businesses even more successful than they already were and more efficient. Because especially the big players always struggle with efficiency, the bigger they get, and automation is a huge factor there. I might add here as well, um, starting with the, let's call it AI revolution, um, automation is getting even more speed. Um, and the second thing that also um, has a lot to do with it, and we all know it by ourselves, there are, are so many tools we already use. There are so many things we have to do. Um, it's imp impossible right now to keep track of all the things we want to do. Um, all of us are probably using dozens of tools. Um, um, and if not right now, for the last, we just have to look back to the last 12 months and there were probably like at least 10 tools we started using, but forget that somehow that we actually want to do something over there. And this is where automation combined with AI really starts to take off. and. This is really a, a thing we feel like everybody should be doing, not just the big ones. Yeah, definitely true. I can also see how my job basically changed with the introduction of AI um, way, way faster than before. And marketing was fast placed before, but it's even faster now. And it's not going to get any slower anytime soon. So um, be prepared. And that being said, um, what we would like to do with you also to get get a feel for how you feel, um, maybe maybe take your phone or use a different browser tab, go to slido.com. There's like a field at the top where you can put into this tiny digit code like 3113484. And then can you maybe tell us, um, are you using automations for your business already? Um, it's a quick vote. You can also use your phone um, very easy. Through, through, through that URL. You don't even have to scan the QR code um, if you don't have a QR code scanner by your hand. Um, and then let's see what you guys what you guys have to say about automation or if you basically use it in your business already. Okay, so five people voted already. As you can see, it's live. Um, so um, some, some are using automation already, it seems. Um, some aren't. To some extent, some people voted that. Um, some people don't use it at all yet, but want to start. Maybe some interesting anecdote while you're voting. Um, since we're talking a lot about automation, um, there's one very interesting example that was published two weeks ago um, by a company called Klarna. Probably all of us heard about it because it's very relevant in the e-commerce sector, you know, for um, payments. Um, so what Klarna was able to do basically 
and they started to incorporate an AI system combined with automation logics and they were able to replace 700 full-time customer service agents and so the work of those agents with a double, double as great outcome as they would have been able to do with the 700 people. Mm -hmm. So with just with that, they increased their profit margin by a lot um, simply by incorporating automations combined with um, AI. Yeah. Uh, which is a very interesting story. We are not about replacing jobs. That's also important. We are about making you better. So those seven full, seven hundred full time agents now um, are not just like um, got rid of, but basically they can something different. Yeah. So the job landscape changes a lot, um, just like my job has said earlier. But yeah. So we can see um, we got a couple of votes in. Um, some people use automation in their business already, um, totally expected, to be honest, but uh, as you can also see, a lot of businesses haven't started yet, but want to start, and some some use it to some extent. So obviously, um, with all of us, there's always room for using more automation. Um, so thanks, thanks for the participation there, by the way. Um, really nice to get a feel for how you guys do. Um, okay, then let's open to the next one. So how is marketing automation utilized in e-commerce, right? So there are a couple of fields that I named earlier already. And um, to be honest, e-commerce businesses face many issues um, that have a lot of potential for automations. Um, some of them I named already, but to go over it, it's only like, um, you always struggle or you always look for new ways to position your products to the outside world, right? To the, towards the customer. Then you also try to establish a social proof of your of your product, which means like building trust for someone else, um, uh, uh, ratings of your platform or your shop or whatever, but also identifying your target audience or your main channel that you want to advertise in, right? It's also a challenge sometimes. Um, designing a whole a whole new or like generally speaking user-friendly online store can also be very challenging because there's always room for improvement on pretty much every website on the whole uh, web, I would say. Um, especially in e-commerce, it's very uh, very relevant for e-commerce is like establish a competitive pricing, right? So it can be really time consuming if you will check for your online store and let's say you sell product A and you would constantly manually check the prices of your competitors. Let's say you have 200, 300, maybe thousands, uh, thousands of shops that sell the same products like you. Just checking those websites every day manually uh, would be a full-time job already. Um, so it would be impossible to basically keep your price up to date to the one that is selling the same product for maybe uh, 10 euros less, right? Um, just to give an example. But there's also room for, uh, for improvement when it comes to increasing conversions on your website. CEO is still a really big topic in commerce always because they have a lot of pages to handle especially if the workshop is very big, then I said creating and optimizing ads, but also allocating the digital marketing budgets between different channels. So let's say you advertise on Meta, you advertise on Google, you advertise on YouTube belongs to Google, but let's say you have display and search bits, right? Um, you can have multiple channels. It can be really uh, it can be really challenging to keep track of all the budgets that you are spending um, and allocating the budgets then in return to channels that do convert for you, right? Um, and so on and so forth. Uh, there are many more. As I said, we still have a long agenda, but um, today we want to focus on three of those areas um, where we will go a little bit more into detail because um, there's not enough time to handle all of them uh, 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 or to go into detail regarding everyone, um, regarding every of those topics. But we will focus on increasing conversions, how you can achieve that through flows maybe. We will focus on the creation or optimization of ads and also the the allocating and digital, uh, the allocating of digital marketing budgets, right? Um, so I said one example of creating or optimizing this, right? So you as an e-commerce business owner, but also generally speaking as a marketer, can have several questions in your mind, which is like, which which products would I run units for, right? Especially if I have a huge range of products, it's tough to it's tough to pick which ones do I want to advertise because sometimes it's challenging to just put ads on all of them, right? Then as said, picking the right channels, picking the right target audience, um, the right marketing and sales message is also challenging, especially if it's a lot of ads. So some people end up in this space where they basically try to answer those questions, right? But it can be more challenging than it seems initially. 
because sometimes we look at those questions and you're like, oh, that's re uh, really easy to answer, right? But if you have to answer it for a thousand products, uh, this alone is really the resource intense, right? Um, and then even if you start answering some of those questions, um, it's still a huge question for you as an e-commerce business owner or as a business owner in general, um, are your ads actually worth it? Right? It can be, it can indeed be that you run a lot of ads and that you waste a lot of money on products that maybe don't even sell, right? So how would you actually check that? You could check that uh, manually, you could go to the campaigns, um, you could go into the campaigns. We, on the left side, you see how you would do it manually. On the right side, you know, we have an automation for it in our software, for example, um, which we call that, uh, which we call the budget friendly flow. Um, as said, on the on the left side, you can see how you would do it manually, which is like checking the channels you're running the ads for. Maybe you also check. Uh, let's let's say it's Google Ads. Then you check your Google Ads account and you check the conversions. Then you check which 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 campaigns or products have zero conversions. Then you maybe all of those uh, from 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 all the data that you collect, you create a Google sheet, and then you start to calculate. Right. This whole process can maybe take you two, three, maybe more hours um, doing it manually. And if you, for example, would use the flow that we have, where all of those steps are basically automated and where all of those tools that you also use are kind of integrated into the flow, um, it's basically one click, you uh, you change a few settings, and then you have the same same results in two minutes. And, and, the, and the best thing about it is um, this flow that you once set up, you can always uh, reuse it. You can also set timely triggers where you say do it once a week or whatever. Um, so you basically set it up once, you once do it two minutes, but doing it manually, you not just once do it for two or three hours, you do it more than two hours because you do it over and over and over again. So it can accumulate to a really, uh, to a really high number of, of hours that you just spent doing this, right? Um, we will talk about this later too as well. Then there's another example that I also mentioned, which is like, um, so how would you actually pinpoint products that you own, right? Um, which ones would you want to advertise? Which ones do you want to? Which ones do you want to put ads budget? On? So on the left side again, you can see the manual approach. You would you would go into your Google Ads data, see which products perform. You export this data, maybe create a Google sheet, right? Then you have to filter it. You have to set the tables. Um, then you have to import this whole data back to your supplemental feed in your shop system or to Google Ads. And this whole process again, right? Very long, very time consuming, very repetitive because you're not doing it once. You do it every time you make the decision which product you want to advertise. So again, you need two or three hours doing it manually there. Um, if you do it once and using a flow we have, for example, which is called the labelizer flow, um, which Sebastian will also sort of show you later. Um, there's also a screenshot that you can see, but it's very complex. Um, this flow, for uh, for instance, setting it up again needs like two or three minutes. Then you just set it live, execute it, and then it's maybe if you set it on a weekly basis or monthly basis, it's uh, it's being done over and over again. Um, just to give you another example. Um, one more example is also like um, SEO, right? Because I talked about SEO in online shops, they sometimes really struggle. If they have hundreds, thousands of products, then 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 you have to create uh, headlines, you have to create uh, product descriptions for those for those products, right? Or for those sub pages. And doing it for all of your products, if you have a huge range of products in your online shop, this can really not just be hours, it can really be days where you're just fixing product descriptions for products, which is really, really tough because you have to find the right uh, the right description, you have to find um, converting or relevant keywords for this product and so on and so forth. Really long process again. And then on the other hand, as seen on the right side, we have a flow in the software, for example, um, it's called product descriptions in Shopify through ChatGPT. Shopify in this case, just an example, could be, could be a different shop system as well, but in this case, it's Shopify. Um, where we basically connect Shopify, ChatGPT, um, and then also your Google Ads account because you need to uh, you also need to report, right? But then you let it go through, and then you can set it live with a with a prompt that you that you tell ChatGPT to use here, and then it automatically generates product descriptions for all your products in your online shops. And um, this is also a cool example to save time, but also to get the most out of your online shop. 
um, and increasing its visibility, to be honest. Um, we will also showcase the data. Of course, and what is important to know, you, you all experienced it a lot. Those things are not one-time things we need to do, but those things are um, very often repeated tasks. Yeah. Um, we sometimes forget about it. Sometimes we don't even have the know-how what to do, actually. That's why we work with excellent people. And the whole idea for the flow diagram, the templates are that we can share the knowledge that is out there, not just the mass, but from a lot of agencies who already work together, from experts who work together. And together with all those people, we start creating templates, and those templates are just available. And this is one of the key aspects when you think about automating stuff and when you actually choose the right tool for you. Good point. Yeah. So, um, one more question that we have for you now that we talked a little bit about repetitive tasks, maybe you can jump into Slido again uh, and just answer the question like, what are workflows that you always dreamed of being automated? If you think about your personal business um, or your daily tasks that you have, are there really annoying tasks that you have and that you always thought like, somehow this could be automated, right? Um, are there any things that you can come out of your mind basically? Just to see what 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 kind of processes you have, workflows that you struggle with in your daily business would be really cool for us to get a feel for that. But okay, so we see someone like the budget thing that we mentioned. Um, someone said reporting is an issue. Apparently, reporting also. Uh, I have to agree, reporting can be very tedious and annoying because reporting, especially, is a is a repeating task, right? We back to you every week or bi-weekly or once a month. Reports dropping multiple times, it seems. Okay, product descriptions, what we just mentioned. Handling the engine. A lot of things shops. about budgets. A lot of things about budgets, yeah. See you, extent of data analysis. Building strategies. Budgeting budget thing again, yeah. Budget building, copywriting, everything. You can just go on and on. Maybe we just talk about some of those. Um, of course. Yeah. None of these things are surprising to me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and most of those things are already incorporated, for example, in our software, because um, we talk a lot to you guys, to a lot of online shops out there. And um, very often we get the same things. And um, we all know what um, is basically impacting our performance. It's not just descriptions. It's, I'm spending the budget on the right things. It's about um, competitors and making sure that you know, we actually know who we compete with, not just in on the edge channel, but in you know, different marketplaces as well. Um, yeah, so reports um, are always important because we want to get transparency over there. Sometimes it feels like even though um, there are constraints in what you can do in Google Ads. It sometimes even though feels like it's not as transparent as it used to be. And that's not just for Google Ads, but for other channels as well. So of course we want to combine data. Yeah, nothing of that. this is actually surprising to me. Mm -hmm. It's still nice to see. I mean, you can also see if some things mentioned multiple times, unless it's written completely different. Um, you can see that SEO really pops out reports, budgeting as well, but budgeting was written very different. In, in different ways, but it's, uh, yeah, it's a nice... Auto checking. <laughs> it sounds basic, but it's so important. We all know that um, um, a lot of those things we need to do on a, such a regular basis. Otherwise, we will, the results will not get better. That's that's basically it. So um, checking your, your ads, your performance, and automating actions based on that is very, very important. Yeah. Uh, cool. Um, I mean, you can still keep on voting. Uh, we will definitely take a look into what's coming in later on as well after the webinar because it's a cool collection of the problems we have. Um, some of them, or most of them, we actually have flows in place, I would say, even already. So, yeah, but anyway. So, as I said, you can before I jump, I want to see whether I can call the ads here. Um, this is something we're not going to talk today um, about it, but it's, of course, Typically, use case hot you can use on a no code platform like ours, um, basically, because you can combine data from different kind of um, tools, from different kind of um, entry and entries, and yeah. basically set automations based on that. So, better controlled ads would be possible as well, but we're not going to talk about it today. Yeah, we also have a flow for web in place. We also have a content piece around it. If you check out the website, um, 
but it's a good point because it can be that you sell sun cream in summer. You don't want to sell it on rainy days, right? But it can also be that you sell umbrellas during rainy days. Obviously, they're going to sell on, uh, better on rainy days than on sunny days. So, of course. Um, yeah, anyway. So, cool collection of uh, problems you have there. Thanks for that. Um, cool. So, let's take a look at how, how would you actually start um, your marketing automation in your business or how would you start implementing it, right? Because it's an important topic, can be very annoying. Um, we suggest to basically use the following uh, the following rules. You shouldn't go into your business and just say, okay, I want to start automating, I buy a random tool that I just saw in an ad or whatever. Um, before you do that, you should really identify the goals you have and the objectives you try to achieve. You, you should also start mapping out your processes. Um, this is really important. We also notice this when talking to customers of ours um, or doing pitches or whatever. I'm selling the software where we always try to find out what are what are workflows in your daily business that you actually try try to automate. Does it make sense to automate, right? Because um, some people don't even think about mapping that out first. But it's really important actually in the whole process um, to identify the automation potential of your business. And then picking the right tool is also the same. You shouldn't just pick any tool. Um, you should really check the ease of use. Is it scalable? Does it fit your use cases of your business? Um, is there customer support? Because people sometimes think automating is very easy. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it isn't, depending on the software. And depending on that, if if it's not that easy to implement, then you really need to make sure that there's customer support in place um, that will help you implementing it into your business, right? Because otherwise you maybe spend more time implementing that automation software than actually automating processes. So yeah, really crucial. Um, so again, one of the major topics is then determining um, what you hope to achieve for automation, right? Um, get a clear understanding of your needs. Um, I won't go through all the points because we also want to show some stuff. Um, I will just skip through it a little bit. But understand your needs, right? Identify your problems that you want to solve with automation, but also define clear objectives. Um, do you want to save time with it? Do you want to save budget? Or do you want to use your budget more efficiently? Or are you or are you just trying to improve performance? All of those are um, legit use cases for automation, but still, in order to pick the right tool, you should you should know what one of those goals you try to achieve, right? Um, to make a good decision later on. We also kind of prepared something of a checklist for you that you can also go through. And um, as you can see on the left side, really just take a piece of paper, not now during the webinar, but maybe afterwards, um, write down the current workflows in your company, the operational processes you have, and then think about would it actually be possible um, to automate them, right? And identifying that, you should answer the questions on the right. So what are those processes and what is the money you're spending on them? Um, what does your process map look like? Um, do you have price increase processes for your online shop in place? Stuff like that, you know? Just go over it, make, take the time. I think it can really help you identify the right problem, uh, the right tool for you. Maybe um, to add on that, um, what I love doing is I just look back on the past five um, working days and really think about what did I do over there. Because yeah. sometimes you have to look at your calendar, for example, um, the process you might not think about is, but you might um, are adding new products on a regular basis to your shop system. Definitely. And this includes a lot of different tasks, like adding product descriptions, making sure it's an immersion center, making sure ads are running for it, and all those things. And those are tasks that can also be automated. But also, like, what is happening if, a, for example, a, a package is um, delayed by customers? Uh, like you send a package and it's delayed, how do you know about it? How can you inform a customer about it? Those are all tasks you can think of, but it's also a lot of things you might be doing in your shop system already, um, thinking about like reports, creating reports over there and stuff like that. So um, what is really helpful is just like looking past your working days and really reflect what you did. And then you can think about those things that you, that you can actually ultimate. Great point. Great point. Because sometimes you don't even need a checklist like that. You can make it more simple, like Sebastian said. Look at your personal work week and map out what, what you actually do and what you spend time with. Good point. Um, cool. So to identify what kind of processes are fitted for automation, there are several criteria that they should meet or, or 
kind of like criteria that are re repeating on processes or workflows that usually are great, um, great candidates to automate. So um, most of the time they are repetitive. This is one thing. They are usually very time consuming. They are prone to error, especially if there's a lot of data involved or making database decisions. Um, then automation is all, uh, always very handy. Um, usually those tasks are also very complex or involve a lot of different um, topics you tackle. And as I said, they are very data intense. Um, that's just like the that's like just the key features of a task that that is primed for automation. Um, cool, yeah. Um, then we're at the point where we basically decide on which automation tool to use. Um, maybe you want to answer this question exactly. Happy to answer it. Um, so there are probably a lot of different things you probably are looking for when choosing the right tool for you. Um, in the next slide, we're also going to show you um, some of the tools out there um, for us. The most important things should be like you have some setup um, support for um, starting off. This could be um, uh, already templates in there. This could be um, someone helping you. This could be uh, on onboarding that really works well. Um, but it's all about like um, the interface you work with. Is it something you feel comfortable with, or is it something that might not be yours right now? And in the end, even though you want to augment stuff over there, it should be something that you are. Um, want to log in on a weekly basis at least because you always want to automate stuff. And last but, last but not least, of course, the integrations. If the integrations for you are not there yet, um, for your channels that you're using, then um, it probably doesn't make sense to use this tool. Mm -hmm. What are tools already out there? Um, we have tools that are quite well known, like Sapier, um, which is like a beginner tool for not just e commerce, it basically has a very broader approach. Um, so one of the main use cases for this is, for example, send leads from the, your website to email or Slack channel or Teams to yourself. But also also make that Rebot, which is totally focused on Google Ads, Adherence, Optimizer, both of them are also focused on Google Ads. And there are a ton of others. Um, and you just need to make sure which one you want to work with. Make.com is way more focused on developers since it's a little bit more complicated. You can actually develop in there as well. So it's more like a low-code platform than a no-code platform, but the, those are the things that you need to think of. All righty. So now it's time about showing you three different things in our software and how you will automate them in our software. Cool. Yeah. Perfect. So you're already in our software here. Um, since we already talked about very broad topics, uh, I don't want to tell you everything there is about our software. Um, I just want to address a few things that we already talked about. Um, in our case, what you see here is like a demo workspace, um, which has already some um, flows included in there. You can also see the flow library over here. The flow library is basically that what we talked about. So those templates that are created by experts um, that you don't have to create by yourself, that um, you can just import in your flow library. And um, they are based on a different different kind of um, elements in there already. Um, it's almost 100 um, templates in there already, and this number is increasing on a weekly basis, so we invest a lot of time in there to increase it, so you can already see uh, a lot of different things in there. What you can do, it starts with simple things like select like notification if a keyword um, performance is bad, because you might not want to pause it automatically, but you just want a new form. Um, it's about um, some reporting stuff we talked about the um, in transparency and some chat um, ad channels. So here we can actually access your team and search, search terms very easily. But it's also about some more broader topics like price competitiveness report. And there are a lot of different things, but we're not going to talk about them today. The second thing we really thought that is very important to have in here is an AI system. And our AI system is actually trained on all those flows that are already in there, on all the actions, and it's getting smarter and smarter by the day just because we are adding new flows in there and uh, we are adding reactions in there. So this is a cool thing about it. You can think about it as like a marketing expert next to you. And it's not just about finding the perfect flows for you, because this is one of the main cases. You have some very often asked questions here, like how can um, I get informed if my matter and that's run out of budget, because you might want to increase it all automatically if the conversion rate is fine. But it's also about brainstorming with it and finding out new ideas. So, for example, we talked about the weather based ads. Um, we're not going to um, show it off today, but we're just going to talk and ask it about can I improve 
my ads based on weather data. So now you have to think about it as a person, and the person really has to think of, so it has to go through all the data that has in there. And it really wants to make sure it gives you the right answer. That's why it's taking a little bit of time at the beginning, of course, and because you start fresh over here, you don't have something that can relate to. But here we already have the answer. So basically it says, yes, we have something. Um, so here it would be um, about um, adjusting your um, ads based on weather data and with two location because it, the weather could be different in one country. So for example, let's say in the Netherlands or Germany, it could be different in the north than in the south. Um, so here you can actually use a two location as well. You could click and try the flow and it will already import it in your data. You could click and learn more and it would explain the flow to you. So, but that's the icons, the icons at the top mean the tools that are used using that flow, right? Exactly. So here we've been using Google Sheets, Google Ads, and it will send you that message after like it's going to exchange like of anything. Okay. okay. But let's chart it to one um, already. Um, and it was already mentioned you guys like the current bucket tracker. So we're going to look at it today um, on Google Ads based on search. So now we're going to jump into it. And um, it looks kind of complicated at the beginning, but no worries. Um, it's our whole system is a bit like you would be working in Excel. So it takes some time, but um, after a few hours, you already can work with it very easily. And no worries as well. You have the AI assistant here as well. So you could ask the AI assistant here about specific things and it will tell you what the um, whatever those things are meaning, and um, it could help you set exchanging things or setting up things. There's so, also a knowledge base, right? And a knowledge base as well, and there are, there are already private flows. This is a private flow, what you can see over here. So it's not about um, something you need to build up by yourself, it's just about something that's already pre built. And the only thing you would be um, able to uh, you would need to change over here is that you actually um, select a spreadsheet, which, which is called the uh, button mm -hmm. and it's already done here. Um, but this is it. And so what we can do now is we can either set it live, then it would be triggered once per day, but you just want to try it out once. That's why we're going to execute it just for one time. So now this the operation is working. We can see it here. It's cute. Um, and now it's already progress. Um, and here you can see the Google Sheets already, which is empty. This is what it would look like. It has here. This is a Google Sheets you can also um, duplicate from us, so you don't have to build it by yourself. When it already filled the data in here, it started, started to um, take out the data here, um, and basically it looked um, basically through Google Ads, through the Google search terms. Here you can see, this is a demo account, so basically what it did, it looked at all the cost clicks here, and it looks at the conversion, it would look at the rowers in this case, um, you can see, okay, the data is still coming in here. And in the end, we tell you, okay, even though we had a conversion value of 11.2K and you had a um, budget spent overall from, from 2.3K, which is actually not a bad row, it's right? It's um, almost, um, it's above five actually. Um, but in the end, what it tells you that from the whole 2.3K, your effective budget is actually 336 years and the rest is burned budget because it's spent to a specific time frame on keywords that haven't um, brought you any kind of conversion. So this is a very good um, starting uh, start, starting point to actually look at your budget and figuring out that what is actually happening in my Google Ads account without the overwhelming looking Google Ads, without the um, need to build reports because this is pretty uh, it's done for you, you can execute it whenever you want, and it will always show you how much you actually are uh, really using your budget for, for good things and how much you might be um, spending on, on things that are not worth it. So and this, and this really tackles the question that I raised earlier of the manual, right? Manually, I will now go to the online shop. Let's say I handle an online shop and I will need to check on all my 1,000 products, how they perform, uh, to, to uh, do the ads convert. And as we could see here now, the report to basically put this budget burned on tracker was created within like two minutes, maybe? Exactly. Is that all? So. And the cool thing is, um, you might can change a few things. You might add, you might want to add some things over here as well. Um, and this is this is the cool thing about it. So um, yeah, um, this is basically the bug tracker. So um, I hope you got an understanding for that. Um, and 
what is important in almost even the reverse is good. It could be the case that you're spending money on things that are not worth it. So it could be the case that we could even get a better reward here. Exactly. Um, the second thing we wanted to talk about are product descriptions. So what we're going to do here now is I'm going to showcase you how you can actually import it into your system if it's not already in the um, in the your own personal workplace. And we're going to get this one, which basically suggests new description and combined with TPT4 and adds it to Google Sheets. So now we're going to try this flow. So it copies it in your personal workspace. You have it done already here. Um, so in this case, it will look at your um, products based on which it gets from the merchant center. And um, now what we have to do here, um, as I said before, we actually have to choose the spreadsheet. We're going to take an existing one. We're going to take the burn button track pen, um, and I check again the product um, sheet title is going to be product description. Exactly, we have that to do here as well. The budget tracker and that product description. This is all you have to do here. But since we want, I want to show you, like, as I said, it's a little bit like Excel. Excel, that basically means um, I want to show you, case you, like, if you want to change something. Here in this case, it would actually list all the products and it would create a um, new product description for all the products. We want to limit it on just 10 different. Um, for products, we're going to say number of items. We want to just want to take 10 items. This is called limit table rules. Um, basically, what it does is um, it helps you to limit it on a specific time of items you want to do it over with. Um, now we have to do the whole thing for this here. So we have to focus on the only 10 products which are based here. And this is basically it. Now you yes. But you didn't put it 10, right? <laughs> I put 10 here, but I didn't select it. Yeah. I've got it. And as you can see, it showed a warning over here. So no worries, there's already a, a lot of stuff in place that helps you um, <laughs> that you don't make mistakes. But now we have it basically um, in here and we're going to execute it now. So what it did is basically um, it's executing now. And what we can do is we can look here, because here we have the product descriptions, which are selected. This Google Sheets in here as well, so I took the same total Google Sheets, but it showed a different sheet. And now some progress already, it's working, and what it does, it looks through all the products, they listed to the first 10 products, and um, basically just suggests new merge and new titles. And another thing that is very important, Open icons, and sometimes we order a little bit overwhelming. We always heard the expression prompting engineer. And um, even for that, we took care of you. And basically, what we did is um, we looked at um, the perfect prompts for you and already put them in, um, in, in here as well. So you don't have to think about what is really important, what we could be looking for on a zero basis. We already did that here. And because this is already a predefined action, and so how would that look like? You would take that in here, the chat GPT, and, and you would take the action, which is called um, basically your product descriptions. So the prompt is already be done for you. You don't have to prompt it by yourself. Like it would be used to do it in OpenAI. Nice. And um, more time saves. Exactly. And um, our experts really thought of how would we would be looking at it. And as you can see over here, here's the old description. And the new description is way more structured and it really focuses on the most important things. Um, and it makes it readable for the user and does a lot of things differently. It works, for example, sometimes also with caps logs because this is something Google also sometimes looks for. So basically, what you can be assured of that this um, does it in a way, um, in a better way that really works for Google as you way better. And it does that for all those products. We limit it to 10, as you can see here. Um, and exactly, this is basically done. And uh, then what you can um, add here as well, you could already add it to your um, Shopify, Shopware, you could add it to the Merchant Center back again. And those are things you can do very easily. Cool. Now we're going to come back. Um, because time is limited, um, I just want to show you the last of the third flows, um, which is basically the limitizer flow. Um, so it looks again kind of long because it's a lot of things that are automated here. And basically what it does over here, um, 
Chris already talked about that you can sometimes have different kinds of products that perform different differently. So there are products that are performing very well and there are products that are performing very poorly. In here, basically, so also into three, four different baskets. Those that are the top performers, those that are mid performers, those that are low performers, and those that do not have any performance at all. And it does that and puts that into a Google support that you can see, okay, how does it look like? And what you can do then again, you can also already add that again the merge center back here. And what you can do then is you could basically set labels for that um, so that the labels are already added to those things and it's automatically imported to new Google Ads and it could create Google Ads and things on that. Mm -hmm. And if you have questions for that again, you could use your assistant, you could ask it, please tell me more about the label analyzer flow in three sentences. I'm going to just get this to report. And now it tries to summarize this flow exactly for you. And you can chat, start chatting with it again, and it will tell you in this case what can work with it. And as you can see, we talked about the um, most important things about choosing the right tool for you. In our software, we decided we want to give you whatever option you want to go for, but at the same time, want to make it easier to work for you with different kind of options. So we're talking about templates here, we're talking about the AI system here, and a lot of other different things in here that just should help you um, work with it. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time for the AI system to answer it because it's going through a lot of data, as I said before, but um, in the end, um, it's going to be faster as soon as you um, start talking with it. Cool. Um, yeah, so that, that's basically it. And um, what I should mention here, I think we've talked about the three more, most important things here. Yeah. And yeah, it's since it was mentioned, um, I think I think reporting was mentioned a lot as well. Right? Um, we also have flows in place for reporting, um, for okay. ready to use. And they are kind of simple. You can set a little time frame, like once a week, once every two weeks, or maybe once a month. Um, just a small, uh, spontaneous showcase, but exactly as I said before, the cost competitive has a new report which basically compares your data prices um, yeah. with other with other competitors um, that are listed in Google Ads here. Um, it tells you a lot. Of, we can um, can basically do a lot of different things here. Um, URL inspection for pages is something that's sometimes also important, but also like. And monthly check for um, products, um, check on text duplicates. There are a lot of different things in here, from uh, really from notifications, but also to to um, reportings. But also across different channels, right? If you go down, uh, I think this is something this one that I saw Meta and Google as we call. I think this is really a nice feature because most platforms give you a reporting for one platform. Let's say it's Google Ads or Meta, and then you still need to do it for both. So it's not, a, it's not a combined task. It's kind of automated sometimes, but only halfway, right? Here you have a combined, uh, here you have a combined reporting for both platforms that you can set for a uh, reappearing time period, right? So this is super nice, I think. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and I will give you another input at late, the latest. Um, but here we are again. So to summarize it, if you really want to start off with automating um, things you're doing, you need to somehow make sure you know what you want to automate. And either because you're working with a tool that has already campus in there that um, has support or you help you finding those things, or you do it by yourself. If it's something Chris mentioned, like um, process map or something I mentioned, look look at your um, previous days before and really think of what you did. And next step would be looking up, looking up in the internet, figuring out like how can you actually automate it. And in the end, you're always looking for, um, for a tool that can do most of the tasks and not just a few tasks. So look for a tool that um, covers most of your tasks. So if you get used to one tool, you don't want to get used to nine different other tools at the same time. Um, so those are the things you really need to look for. And in the end, um, I will really start um, automate stuff because it's not getting easier um, and the tasks are not getting less, but rather they're getting more and more. I think the major key takeaway is also that um, if you don't start automating your process, your competitors might do, and the longer your competitors use automation and the longer you work manually, they will just get further and further ahead of you. 
this is really important to have a good um, So, yeah, definitely a topic everyone should um, should 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 prioritize uh, going forward. Um, very not uh, not not even e-commerce specific, but in every industry, I would say. Yeah. Um, but for e-commerce, even more so because as I said it's a lot of simple and smaller tasks to handle at the same time, and it can accumulate to a point where it's not handleable anymore, and automation can make it handleable for you. So as we say, work harder, not smarter, from yes. automation, right? Um, cool. So that's basically our presentation. Um, one last thing before we hop off. Um, are there any questions left on your side? As we talked a lot, obviously, uh, presenting, uh, is there anything that came up in your mind, anything that is sort of questions about, any feedback also on the presentation? Was too fast, too much information maybe at the same time, not sure. Since it's the kickoff of our new format, um, we love to improve ourselves, we love to make it sometimes even more feasible for you. It might be too broad, it might be too specific, let us really know. Um, it doesn't have to be today, but you can reach out to us whenever you want. Um, but it's something we're going to kick off from now on. And you always have a um, very good opportunity to really do and ask questions beforehand. And since it's um, going to be repeated and not, and not with the same topic, but with a new topic about it, always um, we can really tackle your questions then if you ask them beforehand and really go to those things as well. So you might get something very interesting a bit just tailored to your needs. Yeah. So. Um, I can't see any questions. I only see thanks for a great insight. Um, no worries. It was a pleasure, right? To me and for you. Thanks for your informative presentation. Exciting product release. Yeah. Okay, so I can't see any questions. Really? Um, if there are any questions, you can really just mail us afterwards. Um, I think you got our contacts now with the webinar send out. If there are further questions, just shoot them over. We can also um, answer everything afterwards. Um, someone was asking, is it possible to have a look at the recording? Yeah, um, the webinar was recorded. We will later on um, upload it. I will, I will still trim it a bit down to make it more compact. Um, and then we'll send a follow up on every web, um, on pretty much everyone who submitted for the webinar. I will also send a PDF of the presentation afterwards as a follow up. So. No worries. You can have both the video and the PDF, yeah. Perfect. Thank you all for joining. It was a pleasure talking to you today. Um, and see you soon. See you next time. Ciao. Bye.